Hello, I'm Neto Marin. I'm a developer advocate at the, part, at the develop, developer relations team. Uh, I'm based in Brazil. I, I work with partners in Latin America, but okay, I won't talk about Samba and neither soccer. Okay, so I play billing library. So we have some, some, some big steps when you are deciding to sell something in your app. And nowadays that we have many ways to sell stuff for our users right on, on the phone or through the Google Assistant. It's not accurate, say, anymore, like in-app billing. So this is why we, are, we call the Google Play billing. And now I'm here to talk more about the Play billing library too. This, was a, a, this is a new version of our Play billing library that we keep involving since the last, since the last year. And the idea here is to give you an, a, an, a hint about how to migrate from whatever you're using to start using the Play Building Library too. Because now is the better, <laughs> and the soon will be the only way to do, uh, to use Play Building at your Android app. And I'm gonna explain a little bit why we are um, enforcing this, this change to the Play Building Library too, okay? So the Building, play, the, the building Library makes easy how to uh, sell products, how to consume products in your, within your app. But there was a time uh, that the experience was not so great. So today is very easy, and also it's very important for the next feature that we are announcing for the Play Billing Lab, for the billing uh, ecosystem. So this, the, the usage of the Play Billing Lab is gonna be mandatory. But there was a time when I say that the, you, who, who here remembers the AIDL interface for Play Billing? Someone remembers? It's good, right, to use. <laughs> so, well, this AIDL, for those who are not familiar, it's like the Android interface definition language where you have a service, then your app has to connect to this service and make all the connections and, and, and communications with that. But that's not a great way. It's, for example, it's, um, Sometimes complicated, you lose connection, and it's hard to maintain. And then we come up with the, to the, the Play Billing Library. For example, the over, from the apps using Google Play Billing Library, over two billion in purchase since we launched the Play Billing Library. So many of the transactions are already going through this, play, this library. So for example, this one up from, on code from Blinkst, Using Google Play Bean Library too is just so much easier. It does so many things for us that we don't have to do now. And this is the main idea, right? When you, we write a, a, a client library, is to support developers and the developer experience, and so don't need to write a bunch of code, a bunch of tasks by yourself, so we can rely on us, because we are paid for that. So <laughs> we can help you have a good experience. So it wasn't so pretty. I, as you can see by the reaction when I asked about the IDL, the, the reaction was kind of, oh shit, okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, but that's why we built the Google Play Building Library, right? So for example, the IDL required you to copy a bunch of code to your project, and all the time, for every project you have to copy the, sometimes the same files, many times, right? And then adding new features was kind of difficult because we need to communicate, we need to find a way developers know that we are creating a new feature. And it's not error prone, because then, for example, if we change a parameter, if you add a new field in a bundle, it can crash many apps. So it's always uh, a hard time when you had to update something or have to consider a new feature, right? And again, lots of glue code. So you need to paste the same code ever and ever again, and sometimes it's just if you change a parameter from in to subs, for example, you can break that, that part of the code that you are using. And it's, it was not so um, easy to see where you are breaking the code because it's just glue code that you could avoid that. And for example, some new features like the purchase anywhere, I don't know if we were here in the other uh, session about play billing that uh, Oscar did about, for example, purchasing out of the, the out of Play Store, right? So this kind of new feature, it's only possible to do with a new version, a, a, a refactoring of our Play Bidding services. So this is why we come up with the, the Play Bidding library, right? And like I said, on the, when you're using AIDL, because it's a service interface, it's like a file that you have to put in your code and have to bind to the service, there is no way 
clear way to check for new versions because then you must go to the Google website documentation, Android documentation, and check the new specification of the servers and then implement in your client. So there is no way to, for example, when you, we are using dependencies on Gradle, you can say, hey, there's a new version. I can update here and there is a new version with new features, right? But with the IDL, this was not possible. And other things that kind of could give not a very good experience for the for users that the developers were the responsible for the calling the Play Store UI and the way you manage this. So if you are using result, uh, uh, results, something like that, could be a, a very slow or very not friendly experience and now we are taking care about this. So, and comes here, we here come to the, the PlayBean Library 2. So summary of the things that we did on this, this version. Now we have more helper classes, so you don't need to do this bunch of boilerplate code. We have the classes ready to use here. So um, parser, API parsers and, and other the Pojo stuff, so you can use. Reliable error codes. Here it's very interesting because on the, on the services you must like create constants in your code or something like that and then keep comparing the code error or the code, the operation code with the your constant class, something like that. And we know that we don't want like to, that we don't want to do too much like interfaces just to hold a bunch of constants, right? So why not rely on the system to give us what's the correct code to use, right? So now we have these uh, codes making easier to test and debug. Automatic API parser. Here, it's, in my opinion, one of the best features when using the client library because you don't know to go through all the bundle and do the, all the gets from the hash map and put in your own class. And for example, if we change something, you might have an error trying to get something that's not inside the hash map or this kind of thing, right? So here the API is doing always the, the client library, you always follow the API evolution. So you don't need to keep concerning about Okay, did I type correctly the name of this parameter? Control C, Control V. And okay, it makes sure that parameter is correct, so you don't need to use that, right? And we have all basically listeners to all API interactions, so you don't need to block your code. You can use the paradigm, the paradigm of interactions to receive notification from the play bidding service when something is done. So if a purchase is processed or a subscription is canceled, you has, you're going to receive all the the notifications, all the response from the play bidding server. This makes it much easier that for developers instead of just pulling the play service to check something. So you just receive uh, a callback when it happens. Manage connection to Google Play. Uh, I'm gonna show some, some piece of code comparing both approaches, but now you don't need to bind to the server, check the connection, and then unbind the connection when, it's, when you are done, or for example, taking care of doing retry mechanism if it requires you to reconnect. So it's all, it's everything done by the library now. You just use the library and all this, um, this connection stuff is managed by the play building library. And easier adoption of new features. I would say maybe the only way to adopt new features because we are going to put only uh, new features only available on the PlayBean library. So the, the IDL interface won't receive any updates anymore. So uh, because we are involved, we are um, improving how the, the library um, talks with the Google Play Billing. And another cool stuff, it takes care of the Play UI caching. So you don't, you don't have to mind anymore about the calling Play and caching the, the, the data from, from Play in your own application, your own cache. So the Play billing library is doing everything that for you as well. And here is the, the, the news. Maybe some, one of you, some of you already heard about it. Uh, on, after May 1st, 2021, all new apps and updates that use AIDL or Play billing library 1 will not be accepted. So you have something around 18 months we start doing the migration, so we hope it's enough time, but we are taking this decision exactly to offer a better solution because from the, the version one to version two, for example, we did a full refactor. The library now it's, it's, it's made on Kotlin, so it's much also Kotlin friendly if you are doing Kotlin, your, using Kotlin in your app. 
And this is also a way to implement new features in a, in a best, not best, but in a more smooth way so you can implement new features also in your app, okay? Uh, so using the play building library is as easy as, it's really this, this way. You add the PBL, the, the play building library to the Gradle. You check the docs to see which methods you have to call to few operations, connect, list the products, and do the purchase. Basically, it's what you do. And also, some, yeah, of course, uh, list the products that the user already purchased. So you don't need to do like the bunch of service connection and a bunch of things. Then just start using and it's done. You, you are ready. I could say that you could implement in a billing in a day, just in a day with no errors like testing and everything else with, a, with the, using the play billing library. So let's see, uh, I put together like a, a guide so the first step is, of course, add the dependence on the Gradle. So 203, of course, check the documentation at the moment you are start doing. But like I said, Gradle will notify you if you are using an old version. Go and say, hey, there's a new version. Just start using the new version. And then delete some classes. If you are already using AIDL, yes, you can delete some classes because now they are for free. For example, this picture, you can see it's from our Trivial Drive sample, the first sample we, we made in 2013, I think, for our Trivial Drive. And you can see there is a bunch of classes purchased at Java, EIB result, EIB wrapper, uh, helper. All these classes were created as a boilerplate code. And now these classes, not exactly these classes, of course, but uh, these functionalities it's embedded into the, the client library. So you don't need anymore to change the, your EAB helper every time you update a new product or something like that. So you can use all the classes. And what changes you need to do in your code if you are migrating for, from AIDL to the Play Building Library too? So first, you don't need to manage connection with Play Service by yourself anymore. So what you do is create an instance of billing client then you have to implement uh, the billing cloud state listener to receive the callbacks about the service status. So you don't need to manage, you just need to know what is happening. So it's, if, it's connect, if it's connected or it's disconnected. But you don't need to retry by yourself. For example, if the connection is lost, the service will be do the, the, redo the connection by itself. So you don't need to take care about this, but you can check the status. And then you call the method start connection on the billing client instance, just like that. You don't need to create a service bind, you don't need to check for the intent, to just use the billing connect and you do it for you. And if you are using the, uh, the old idea style, you have to remove the every, all the own active result code because what happens is when you do in the, using the idea, right? You call Play Store and when it's done, the app is called back. And then you have to process what is result in your activity because it comes as a parameter in the intent, right? So now you don't need to do that. Now you can, you can implement the listeners and the listener will be notified when the purchase is completed. So it's much easier than manage states and all the, the life cycle uh, potential issues you know that can happen when you are tr handling this kind of on, re on activity result, right? So let's check a little bit about code. I, may, I know you like to see code, so not just talking. <laughs> well, this is the way you should do as using, when using AIDL. So as you can see, you need to define what happens when a service is disconnected on service connected. Then you have to implement this interface. Then you need to remember the name of the intent. So have to hard, co hard code these in your, or put in a string, but you need to copy this. And it happened to me and maybe happened to you already. You just miss, you have a typo in this string and then you don't, you, like you keep debugging for one hour, you don't find the error. And when re and after, find like after four hours, you take a shower, oh yes, there is a typo, right? Ever happened to you? <laughs> so it's, it happens every time. So now we don't need to do this anymore. So this is the code when using uh, Play Bidding Library. So you have the new instance using the pattern, uh, the, the new builder um, design pattern. You set the listener. In this case, we are saying that the 
own activity is the listener, but you, you could use any class you want, anything in your structure if you want, and then do a build. After that, start connection only. There is no name of intent, there is no name of permission, nothing. You just call start connection. And here, you have to override the, the own building setup finish. It's just, uh, you don't need to retry, for example, like I said, you don't need to retry if it's disconnected, but you wanna probably, you wanna call query SQ details after the connection is done, so you can list uh, all the SQ details you have for that user, for example. So it's, but it's the, according to your logic. So if it's, you are only calling the query SQ details when the user asks to see the product, no problem, it's just uh, a way that we are showing that you must, uh, you can call the query SQ details because the bidding client is ready, okay? Uh, and here, for example, is when you are creating the pending intent, so you can call the Play Store. So, bunch of code, right? You need to create, remember the context, you need to get the, the from the, uh, you had the response code from the bundle, then you compare with a, a code that in this case was a, a constant in my class. So, a bunch of boilerplate code that it's just repeating every, Ever, uh, every app you do. So here, when you are calling on using play building library, you just have like, you have the purchase params. So using again the builder pattern, so as such, set SQ, set type, set all the SQs in case you are doing an upgrade or downgrade on a subscription, and then launch a building flow. It's done. At this moment, the play building library will call the play store, sending all the parameters when, it come, and when it's back, when your purchase is succeed, the user spend $500 in your app, then you have to handle the result. So here is what you need to do if you are using AIDL. So you need to receive an activity result, test the request code, test the data, get the response code, get the string extra, and then compare everything and then take an action. Like this you should do for every app you are doing or for every activity that you interact with the Play Store. Play store. Now, you have to only to implement this listener on purchase and update. You receive the code and now I can use the billing response class to check the status, so it's in this case okay. You have the code to manage the purchase because at this time you, have, you maybe wanna do something in your app, for example, add that coin to the user inventory or enable the user access to a feature. So at this point is your code according to your logic. So this handle purchase, imagine is your logic, your business logic for handling the user purchase, okay? And if the result code is canceled, so you can say, hey, what happened? Why you are canceling? Or just an error or something, you can check there. So but much more um, clear to see, right, implementation, much more uh, friendly, because I'm, I'm, uh, as, in my opinion, good code is a code that you can read easily, right? So this is a much better code than if you compare to the IDL bunch of boilerplate code, right? So implementation checklist. First, first thing that it's kind of new to the play billing library, to the play billing service in general, acknowledge all purchase. So this is to prevent frauds, to prevent misuse of the play billing. So every purchase, every purchase must be acknowledged by, by your app. It can be done through your app, an Android app, or also through the server side. So we have the calls both in client and the server side, okay? If, the, if you don't acknowledge that purchase in three days, the purchase is automatically refunded. So if it's a consumable product, what is a consumable product? Consumable product like, for example, coins in a game. So you have to purchase, you, can, you should purchase many times, right? So, since products in Google Play are managed, so Google Play won't allow the user to purchase the same product twice, you must consume the product before selling again. So in this case, when you consume a product, you are at the same time acknowledging the purchase because if you just can consume something that you really received, right? But if it's not uh, a consumable product, imagine you are selling a premium experience or a subscription, in this case, you must acknowledge the purchase. So otherwise you're gonna have a refund in three days. Avoid abuse, 
So uh, we know that we, in general, we need, for example, um, to validate a purchase, a signature. What we recommend is that you use uh, a server side to do that. I know that sometimes it's not possible for everybody to have a server side or a customer experience like that, but it's a way to avoid abuse. So because then you can validate the recipe, the receipt. So uh, and also for notification, use also your developer notification for subscriptions, and remove payloads. Something that people ask us in a, in the the previous version is choose developer payload. Developer payload is a arbitrary string you can add to the to the the flow the purchase flow that you can check later with that. The problem is many people were using that as a security validation, and this is not a correct use because it can be intercepted like medium demand attack and can be very easy like reverse engineered. So we in the first version we like. We didn't support the payload, but it's now required by other features. So we, in the Play Bidding Library 2, you have the developer payload, but please don't uh, use the developer payload unless it's really necessary for you. Try to have, use another mechanism to validate or to, to integrate the, sell, the, the purchase. So some, some other things that not specifically related to the, to the uh, purchase specific, on-time purchase, but Real-time developer notification. This is what, uh, a way to receive notification about any event related to subscriptions. So this is very good because then you can, you can receive real-time updates about canceling, about new subscriptions, upgrade, uh, um, um, grace period and account hold events. So basically, also you reduce your usage for the Google Play Developer API. And this is something that, for example, we, we've seen many partners, many apps having problems, for example, checking all the time the Google Play Developer API, and when they have a, a spike, a big usage, like a media announcement, something like that, they run out of quota because they keep doing the request for every new purchase, and sometimes it can be run out of quota. And that's something that we can do much for you because then you need to in, in contact with Google, then you need to increase the quota, sometimes it takes Fine, because it's a manual process. So if you use real-time developer notification, you don't need to go and pull our server. So you can just receive notification and do by yourself. So, and then stay under quota. So for example, here, here's like a little bit the, the, uh, a summary from, of the flow. So when a new subs or its status change, so for example, the user has a problem with their credit card, so it, it enters in the account hold mode in the grace period mode, you should know that it happens. So you can send a, a, a message, hey, uh, you're having problem to process your payment. We'd like to check this and try again. So this can reduce the, the involuntary churn a lot in your app. So it's a way that you actively um, win back your user, right? Then but when this, something happens, the Play Store will send a push, a push using the pub sub topic it's a, uh, we have a PubSub is a, cloud, a Google Cloud Platform product, but don't worry, you have free code to use, like the free, the, the, the free code is totally enough for, play, for the play billing uh, notification. Of course, if you want to use, you are more than welcome to try the PubSub, it's a great product for communication, for, for messaging. But then you, you are registered to this topic, so you consume this topic with this message, and after you consume that, you can say, okay, this, um, uh, uh, the, a change has occurred on this subscription, like the, the person has, the, the user has canceled the subscription. And how you know that? You receive, this is the, uh, a notification, for example. In this case, um, it's buying a new subscription, subscription purchase, okay? Um, this will be received by your server side. Remember, this is on your server side. So, you can use, you have to develop like a, a, a little infrastructure to process this, can be whatever language you want to use, Golang, Kotlin, Python, whatever, because it's an API, right? It's a pub sub, you can just uh, consume that. And here you have the purchase token, that is what you need to validate the purchase, and you have the subscription package, in, case, in this case the subscription ID, ID that you can uh, use as a, your SQ, your product ID. With that, you, you know that this user at that moment 
has purchased a subscription. So you don't need to do a Play Developer API request to validate it because this is coming from Google and only you can consume this because it's registered on the Cloud Console. So, and also it's much, much more, uh, it's much more real, reliable how, using the re real-time developer notification than pulling the server for, for any of subscriptions. Okay? I am also run out of the, running out of the time. So Kotlin and C++ versions, we are working on, on new versions for C++, and we know that it's necessary for Unity and Unreal, so we are working with them. And if you are interested on having updates, receiving updates, and testing C++ or Unity and Unreal plugins, come to talk with us. So you can come uh, visit us here or send an email to the contacts they're gonna show in the, the end, right? And Play Pass is also another stuff, very cool that we launched recently. I imagine you saw that you can, uh, for a fixed amount, for a, a, uh, um, a, a, single, a single price, you, can, you have access for many games and subscriptions. It's very cool if you wanna try different games and different uh, products, it's very cool. If you're interested to offer this in your product, there's a forum in developer.android.com. And get started today. So you have what the Play Billing Library reference. So it's just go on developer.android.com, Google Play Billing. That's a full overview with all steps covering the developer journey on how to implement the Play Billing Library. And take a look at our samples. We have samples for real-time development notification, including server-side code. We have the Trivial Drive 2 version in Kotlin. So we can see the implementation, how we are doing this. And please follow us in the social media channels. Um, give your feedback. We'd like to love to hear feedback about your experience with Play Building Library. Your feedback we, on the on the samples, for example, you can if you find something wrong, please send us an issue on, on GitHub. We're more than welcome, more than glad to help you on, on this implementation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.